What's up dudes, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we are furious in the country called Belarus. You already know the drill, let's dissect the flag. The Belarusian flag makes a lot of symbols. The red represents that it used to be a part of the Soviet Union, but it's not anymore. And it's now friends with Russia. So that's kind of cool for Belarus. And the green represents the grass, and those stripe stripes are like from a Belarusian SSR was used. And right there is the emblem of Belarus right there, and that's what it says. And you can see also red and green, and there is a star on top which is red, which meaning that it used to be communist. But it's not anymore, but still pretty much communist, literally. And right there is yellow things and flowers next to that. One of them is pink and one of them is purple. It's just very cool. However, the countries located in Europe bordering Poland, Lithuania, Russia, and Ukraine it is not a part of the European Union. It's because of the Russian relationship and it's also in there right there and it's landlocked and however this cross was by in in this thing in 1992 and when the Kievan Rus was in the Mongols invasion and right there is the Grand Duchy of Lithuania is modern day a part of Lithuania, Latvia, Belarus, Ukraine Moldova, and Poland. And that's it. And then the Napoleon invaded, did Russia, and Belarus got hard land for Napoleon. And then the first government of People's Republic of Belarus, like the communists, took over, and it declared its own independence. And look, Right now, and then it signed a treaty between Belarus and Ukraine to form the Russian Federation. And this is the current president, Lukashenko. Since then, he has had many complications in his political stuff, even a lot. Yeah, a lot of them are just like Russian stuff, like almost every neighboring country. Hates Belarus, except for Russia, by the way, and all that stuff. But we'll get into that later. However, the capital and largest city is Minsk, and their official language is Belarusian and Russian, and their recognized minority language is Polish, Ukrainian, and Yiddish. And then in their ethnic groups, it's mostly Belarusians, but others are Russian, Poles, Ukrainians, and others, and the religion is Christianity, mostly 55.4%, but others are Eastern Orthodoxy, and other religions, Christian, Norwegian, and other, and unspecified. And their development is Belarusian, which Belarusian comes mostly in Belarus. Some of them are in the United States or Russia. And then their government is a presidential republic under a dictatorship. Yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about. And the president is Alexander Lukashenko since 1994, and it's disputed since 2020. And they're like, um, in the 1990s, like, oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. That's good president. But in the 2020s, I'm like, whoop, oh shoot, that's messed up. And protest became started, started, started. Like, everyone wants the president out of here. And their legislator is the upper house, is the Council of Republic, and their lowest house is the House of Representatives. And due to the in 1987, and Prince Vitorov in the 10th century, Grand Duchy in Lithuania in 1236, and People's 
and the Belarusian People's Republic in 1918, independence in 1918, and then it declared independence again in 1990, then sovereignty, and then in 1991 it declared independence, and then Constitution 1984, and Last Amendment in 2004, and then their area is 207,595 kilometers, or 8,153 square miles, making it a fourth, and their water is 1.4%, or 2,830 kilometers, or 1.093 square miles, and their population is 9,349,645, making it 96th in the list, and they're 2019, those are 9,413,446, and their population density is 118.6 square miles, making it 142nd, and their GDP in total with three Ps is $185.889 billion, making it 69th. That's a funny number. And per capita is 19,758, making it 66. And then GDP nominal in total is $57.708 billion, making it 75th. And per capita is $6,133, making it a fourth. And their GNI is 25.3, making it low. And their HEI is 0 0.23, 8.23, making very high in this list in 53rd. And their currency is Belgian Rubro, or BYN. And their time zone is the same as Eastern Russia's time, which is... U T C M S K, and then their driving zone is right. Speaking of right, let's read the presidential election in eighteen ninety six. We're getting close to the twentieth century, a uh, pet century, of course. This is like almost one hundred years old. But not a hundred years old, but also a long time ago. Let's see. In three, two, one, let's read. The 28th presidential election in American history took place on November 3rd, 1896. Turnout was high, and people were saying things like this. It was the most important election ever. Yeah, that's right. As you may don't know of this, that's every election. Grover Cleveland's second term didn't go so well, but most of the country has been stuck in a severe economic depression. And meanwhile, the populist movement was in the pure peak with poor people and pointing fingers at the man. Everybody seemed to be losing money during this time, even the rich. The Republicans Railed behind a new face in national scene. William McKinley, the former governor of Ohio, they nominated Garrett Hobart, his running mate, a former New Jersey legislator. The Democratic Party had generally shifted away from Cleveland's to a more free silver Montreal policy, calling the inspiration to help the ease economic crisis. In fact, they had adopted several of the populist ideas at first. No one was obvious successful to Cleveland, and there were several candidates emerged, like old Silver Dick himself, Richard P. Bland, a former representative from Missouri. However, soon another dude stood out in quite a bit for mostly incredibly and speechless. That dude was William Jennings Bryan. Bryan was a former U.S. rep 
representative and lawyer from Nebraska, gave his famous to cross the gold, cross of gold speech. At the Democrat National Convention, in the speech, he sounded very much like a populist personality attacking a big city corporate and the gold standard while catching for government railroads and farmers that ever hurt my depression. His speech was so dramatic that after he was done, some degwits carried out in, in his shoulders as if young quarterback who was scored him the winning touchdown. Needles to say Brian got the nomination, but Democrats nominated Arthur Sparrow, a shipbuilder from Maine, to be his running mate. The Populist Party also emerged William Jennings Bryan, since his party basically corporate corporate their ideas and their newly formed silver parties and the quite presidential election, Brian was still the youngest person ever nominated for a major political party for president. He was free six on election day. Meanwhile, the Democrats were not on board with the free silver moment. Formed their own political party known as the New National Democratic Party, also known as Gold Democrats. They were more aligned with Cleveland and would absolutely not support Ryan. They met in Augusta and nominated John Parmel, the U.S. Senator from Illinois, for president, and Simon Bunker, a former governor from Kentucky, for vice president. Palmer was 79 years old and Buckworth was 73, making the two oldest combined presidential tickets in American history. The Prohibition Party split too after the election. Some wanted to go beyond the Prohibition issue and said to form the different Prohibition Party. So basically the Prohibition Party had two tickets, Joshua Weaving and Hale Johnson forming traditional single tick issued tickets in Charles Bentley and James Southgate forming a more broad-based issue in the t ticket. However, let's go right here. McKinley and Ryan were one third of a chance. So it became a battle between Williams and likely presidential candidate before him. Ryan crisscrossed the country to campaign. He traveled 18,000 miles in three months. In just 100 days, he gave over 500 speeches. Of those one days, he went to St. Louis. He gave 36 speeches in one day. By doing this, he reached millions of people and everywhere he went. Huge crowds showed up. He didn't much get sleep and often lost his voice explaining in a hoarse voice but less his real voice at the previous places he kept visiting to keep fitting up with people. Meanwhile, McKinley mostly just stayed home. He didn't have to crisscross the country, as his buddy Mark Hanna did actually did work and brought in people to McKinley's front porch. Hanna's orchard church, a manful campaign, and successfully and raising millions of dollars and more than Brian can, could raise. In fact, Hannah was literally in the new form of campaign financing that could have been on the norm ever since he straight became to a businessman. Donations making Prince McKinley campaign successfully and making all the business. Fear of Brian presidency. And here are our results. William McKinley won, becoming a 
25th presidential election in American history. He received 251, 271 electoral votes and 51% of popular vote. He did practically did well in the East and the Northwest. William James Bryan received 176 electoral votes and winning about 46.7% of popular vote. He did in fact did well in, in farmers in the South, West, and Midwest. I guess that's no surprise. John Farmers finished third with under 1% of popular vote. Joshua Cleveland finished fourth with over just 3,000 votes behind Palmer. Garrett Hobart became the 24th Vice President in American history. William Jennings Bryan's defeat was a blow of a populist moment, momentum. Many of the brought into the mainstream during his campaign would stick around but after this election. 79.3% of the election voted in this election. What do you think? Was, was it wrong? Did I mess up? I think so. But as it turns out, it wasn't that long. I messed up only a little bit. But it's kind of messed up and it's kind of sweeter. Look at... I'm going to show you the map real quick. Look at this map. Yeah, that's the map. Republican states, not much state. But Democrat states, a lot of them. It's because that McKinley kind of just stayed home, which most people don't do a lot. And during campaigns, William Jennings Bryan crisscrossed across the entire country and did all the stuff right there. Like, all the stuff you can see, like... Meanwhile, Republicans staying home while a Democrat is just moving around the country campaign. And you know what? If he was president, he would have kept his promise like James K. Polk. Or not. We'll see. But anyways, thank you for watching this video. Hope you have a great day, an amazing day, and I'll see you next week.